And I'm very, very excited to do a little uh, little Vegas-centric work today as we welcome in the star running back for the UNLV Rebels, running back Charles Williams. And, and Charles, man, i got to start here. Uh, you have what I think is arguably the coolest nickname in all, <laughs> of col- in all of college athletics. Where did the chuck wagon come from? Where was this birth? I need, like, the complete origin story. So um, I had a teammate, Lex. Uh, he had a cool nickname, and he played running back, too. His name was Lex Lightning. So Mark Wallington, he came up with the idea of, you know, of finding me a nickname and he thought of, you know, the chuck wagon because, you know, I'm going to be carrying a load or, you know, I do all the heavy work, the heavy lifting. And, you know, I just stuck with it because, it, you know, it's something cool. Um, I didn't have to think of it. You know, it was a good little nickname and I liked it. Yeah. I mean, it's look. The fact that I didn't know, I'm a California guy, right? So when we came out here, gosh, about a year and a half now, and my wife actually enrolled in UNLV. She's a graduate student, so I was telling her I was talking to uh, to one of her, her colleagues today. But when we came out here, we didn't know all that much about UNLV, UNLV football, right? A- yeah. And the first thing I heard was the chuck wagon. And I was like, that is, that is a fantastic nickname. So I'm glad I got the origin story. But, you know, all the nickname stuff aside, man, all the incredible stuff you've done on, on the field the past couple of years. On Saturday, you become UNLV's all-time leading rusher. First off, like, congratulations on, on that. And I imagine it has to be just kind of one of those culmination-type moments where you're like, hey, all the hard work I've put in probably since I was a little kid. Like, it's, it's nice to see uh, my mm-hmm. name in the record books in that, in that way. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, when I first got here, I just wanted to – show that like you know if you chose the right person when they recruited me and you know they have no regrets and you know to this day I always bust my butt to just you know be the best I can and I don't think about you know the accolades and stuff like that you know I just do what I'm supposed to do on the field and help us try to go get a win every weekend. You you talk about busting your butt and and I heard it's not just on the football field but the academic side side of things like why is it so important for you to be obviously be a beast on the football field but to take care of your business off the field in, in the library as well? You know, uh, my dad, he went to college and he got his degree and, you know, uh, that just motivated me because, you know, I want to be like him, but even better. And, you know, he pushed me to always have my grades right because, you know, they can never take my degree away from me. And, you know, I just wanted to, you know, be the first one in my family on my grandma's side, uh, which is my mom's side, uh, you know, just to come back from a four-year institution with that paper and, uh, you know, just make the family proud. And I just I just know academics is very important because, you know, after football, I need to do something with my life. So having that degree really does help. And you're, and you're 100 percent right, too. No matter what happens, no matter how many touchdowns you score, like you always have that degree. And, and to your point, man, like it just means a ton to I feel like it means more to the family. Right. Than it does to you. Like my degree, I think, is somewhere in, in Northern California with my parents. Like they have it somewhere. Right. But they love to have it. it. It's really important to them. And I think it's a nice homage to all the people that helped get you there. Right. Because, you know, as well as I do, that none of us do this alone. It takes a ton of people to get us from A to Z. And the fact that you're so committed to that and making sure that you're you're making everyone on your side of the family proud. I think that's, that's very cool, man. That's very it's to be commended. No doubt about it. Yes, sir. You guys are coming off a big Saturday, Charles. Big Saturday. Big win against New Mexico. I, I'm curious for you guys, like, what was working uh, when you guys were, were taking on New Mexico the other day? You know, everything was clicking. Like, all the stuff we talk about and uh, keep going over and over, uh, just special teams for one. You know, start off the game. Boom. We started, they started off at the nine, nine yard line. That's just, you know, a good start, like a good spark for the team, knowing we're doing what we're supposed to do already. So like executing like the little things. And then on offense, you know, we had our explosive plays. We had good runs in the run game. And then we had our big passes in the air and stuff like that. So just doing everything on offense, protection, the QB getting get sacked, little things like that, that it goes unnoticed. But when we get back and watch film, we just look at it and be like, you know, we did what we were supposed to do. And then defense, they did a great job. They gave us a short field about like three to four times, turning that ball over and making the QBs, you know, fumble and stuff like that. So you feed off that energy, just back and forth, back and forth, putting up points, stopping them, stuff like that. It's really good just to see like all that come together. And then you get it, you get the result, a win. Yeah, and speaking of that win, the first win in 2021, I mean, how gratifying was it just to get number one out of the way? You know, it's just good to come back home and you had that positive mindset. And then for those younger dudes, that was their first win. Coach Rowe, that was his first win as a head coach. And, you know, it was just great to, you know, had a good vibe after all the hard work we put in. You know, it's just pretty good just to come back and say, you know, we need to work on this, but, hey, we still won right here because of certain plays like this and everything else like that on the outside. You know, Charles, I went to my first UNLV game a couple weeks ago, 
And I think one of the great things, one of the things that I, I love the most about our situation here in Las Vegas is the fact that we share the stadium with you all. You guys get Saturdays, we get Sundays. And I think it's so important to the community. I think it's so important to just the state of Nevada that to have that kind of partnership, to have that union that says, hey, yes, the stadium is beautiful. It's for the Raiders, but it's for UNLV too. It's for the high school kids. It is for this community. When you go in and you play at that stadium, and like I said, I was fortunate enough to go to my first game a few weeks back, and I was so pleasantly surprised, and I mean this in the best possible way, how collegiate it felt. Like, I didn't, I didn't know if it was going to feel kind of like an NFL game. It very much felt like I was at a college football game in the best possible way. Like, how, how much fun have you guys had playing in that beautiful, uh, beautiful stadium off the strip there? Oh, it's been real great. You know, just my first time walking in, it, it felt like a, like, home. Like, it was just a great experience. And, you know, suiting up and everything, you see all the, like, because when we walk at it, you see all the Raiders stuff, like the way team will, uh, you know, be locking up here. And then you have the uh, home team's locker room. It's just, like, a great vibe. It's, like, you surrounding yourself around the next level, and it's, like, you that, you're that close. Like, this game right here can be one step closer to reaching your dreams. And, you know, when we get out there on that field, you know, you got the band going, you got the students going, uh, you got the family there. It's just a great vibe. You know, like you said, it's collegiate. It doesn't feel like an NFL game. It's more like a collegiate game. So it's just how it was at Soundboard, but a little bit nicer inside, a little brighter lights, a little fresh field. That's about it. Yeah, and I got to ask you this, man. Like I said, that first game that I was there was the game that you guys unveiled that incredible slot machine. What is it like? You got talk me through it, man. Like I'm pretty sure you were the first guy that got to to pull the handle, yeah. right? Yeah. So talk me through this. Like, what were you guys like surprised when you saw it? like? And that thing is that thing's pretty impressive. Uh, so they told us the day before, I think in meetings or we had like a after our walkthrough. Yeah, it was after our walkthrough. They told us that you know we want to go uh, have this new uh, celebration. Uh, you know, turnover towel stuff like that, turnover chain stuff like that. We're going to have this new celebration for you guys on the sideline. We was like, okay, what is it? And then they showed us the picture. It was a slot machine. And, you know, it was just the motivation for, you know, offensive defense, whoever gets there first, you know, they get the, you know, all the juice and all the publicity. So after I scored and everything, I forgot about it, honestly, because, you know, you usually want to celebrate with your boys. They was telling me, just go to the slot machine. So when I got there, I cranked it down and, uh, you know, the little thing went down and, you know, we went viral, uh, I guess, on Bleacher Report just for our celebration. But it brings the team together. It keeps the team locked in. And, you know, when we had that play that, you know, electrifies the whole entire building, you can just follow that all the way to the sideline and keep that juice flowing. Is, is it hard to crank it or does it go pretty easy? Uh, uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, Kyle Williams, number one, the receiver, he broke it. Uh, <laughs> so they had to fix it. Crazy stuff. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, man. Well, hopefully we see a lot of the uh, the slot machine this Saturday at Allegiant. You guys are back in the building taking on Hawaii. Man, give me the scouting report on Hawaii. What, what does Hawaii do really well? What kind of challenge do they can present to our Rebels this weekend? Very good defense. They're uh, top five in the nation with turnovers, so we got to protect that ball. And, you know, they play with a lot of heart. and uh, They have a lot of good uh, players, a lot of older players, too, uh, similar to our uh, offense, you know, we have a lot of older players that, you know, have some experience. So they're experienced, solid defense, in my opinion. But, you know, there's some things they give up, and we got to take advantage of those things. And uh, I feel like their offense, is, is, they're very explosive. So, you know, got to watch out for that. Our defense has been locking in on that. And overall, I think, you know, they're a solid team. You know, they have some close losses. They, they're they not getting blown out the water or anything like that. So, you know, got to watch out and play our best ball against them. And Charles, before we get you out of here, I got to ask, man. So I was telling Mark a few minutes ago, I'm an Oregon guy, right? So I'm pulling for Coach Arroyo in a big way. But you guys are trying to give Oregon a run for your money with all these new uniforms you got, man. I feel like every time I turn on the TV, you guys are in the red and the black and the white and all these mixing and matching. Like, you guys are looking good out there, man. Oh, yeah. You know, shout out to Josh Hewitt. He's our equipment manager. He comes together with all those ideas and stuff like that. Uh, I like the, you know, little different uh, unit, unit combinations he has. Um you know, each week, you know, you want to feel and play good. So, what way, you know, in what way can you do that? And that's what our uniforms. So, we got three different helmets, I believe, or four. I don't know. We got, we got so many helmets. And then, you know, just uh, like Josh, he just does a great job of picking the uniforms and, you know, having us out there on game day swagged out. So, I know we got a few more weeks left, a few more combinations to try out. But so far, what's the best one? What's the uh, the Charles Williams favorite in terms of the, the combos you rocked in 2021? It's two. The all black and all red. The all black is good. That's a good one. I've seen that one a couple times. That's a good. That's a good looking combination right there. Our dark horse is the black uh, on top of the white. No, I mean, look, 
the beauty of this man, you got no bad combos, right? Like no. you don't, you're not one of those schools you got to wear like, oh man, the alternates look kind of funky. Or, hey, this color, <laughs> yeah. this color is not super flattering. Like all yeah. the colors look good, all the combos look good. You guys are out there doing your thing, and, and mm-hmm. hopefully you keep it up for the rest of the season. Well, hey man, congratulations on the win, congratulations on the record, congratulations on all the incredible things you're doing off the field. Uh, like I said, it's been it was a treat to go to my first you know V game a few weeks back, and uh, and I'll, I promise you this won't be the first one I'm there for. So like I said, man, good luck the rest of the way. Good luck on Saturday, and I appreciate you hanging out with us for a few minutes. Oh yeah, thank you for having me on the show, and thank you, thank you so much, thank you.